Welcome again to Hadrashot HaPesach, our Passover devotions. Now, we spoke last time about Egypt, and now we're going to speak about truly the name of this festival, Chag Hamatzot, or the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And we need to make a distinction between the term Passover and the Festival of Unleavened Bread. Now I realize, and even the Bible does this, in speaking about the entire festival with that term Passover. But more specifically, we find biblically that Passover is just one day. It's the day when the Passover lamb was sacrificed. Now in Egypt, it was done according to the instructions in Exodus chapter 12 at twilight that is in the late afternoon. It was prepared and it was eaten on the next day, which would be the 15th day of that first month called Aviv or Nisan. We need to remember that according to the Bible, a new day begins with sundown. When it becomes dark, a new day. And therefore, on that 15th day of that first month, they would eat the Passover sacrifice. And that began the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I want us to focus in, in this devotion, on what the Apostle Paul says about that term, unleavened. Now, we know that the festival of unleavened bread is seven days. And listen to the mindset that biblically we should have as believers, because we're going to learn that we have a Passover lamb. If you have your Bible, I would invite you to open up to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to begin with verse 6. Just three short verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning with verse 6. What does Paul tell us? Not good is your boasting. Boasting is related to pride. And pride brings about a fall. It leads us into sin. We cannot serve God with pride. So Paul warns us and says, Your boasting is not good. Do you not know that a little bit of leaven? Now, leaven causes dough to, to swell, to rise up. And pride is also the swelling up of one's thought for his self or herself. And again, there's an inherent relationship between pride and sin. We're going to see Paul specifically says that in a moment. So a little bit of leaven, it, the whole batch, leavens. Therefore, we have a problem. Naturally. And who we are in a natural sense, we tend to be prideful, we tend to be selfish, we tend to put ourselves before others. This is not the way of the Lord. It is not how one who has been redeemed ought to behave. And notice what he says in this passage. Look now to the next verse, verse 7. Therefore, let us do something. Let us cleanse out the old leaven. That word old represents the old man, who we were before coming to faith, before becoming that new creation. And how do we become that new creation? Well, in a moment, Paul's going to tell us. But let us cleanse out that old leaven in order that you are a new batch. Now that is a batch of dough. And it says we're supposed to be new. Now realize in the scripture that bread in a general sense and matzah, unleavened bread, is indeed bread. But unleavenedness, we're going to see, speaks about a removal, a cleansing out of pride and those things that are inappropriate for those who belong through redemption to the living God. So he says, in order that you become a new batch, just as also you are unleavened. 
So our new condition in the Messiah is that we are without leaven. And therefore, this festival has to do with our identity. The Feast of Unleavened Bread, these seven days, remind us of who we are in Messiah. We are no longer that old person, that old person of pride and selfishness, those who put themselves first, but we become a new batch, new dough, in order that we might be used by God for a purpose, that we might become his servants and realize this. When we go back to Exodus 12 and the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, and not just the children of Israel, but there was that mixed multitude of nations that also kept the festival. That is, they believed the instructions of God and they responded to God's word and they too were brought into the family of God. So he says, just as you are unleavened. And then notice the next thing he says. He speaks to us as being unleavened. How did we become unleavened? What caused us to become that new batch? Well, he tells us, the next word is a word of conjunction that unites two thoughts together. It shows that there is a strong relationship. How do we become unleavened? It says, just here. For also our Passover. Now, who's our? The new body. That is, those who are followers of Messiah. We become a new creation in Messiah. And who is Messiah? He says, for also our Passover in behalf of us has been sacrifice. Not killed, but sacrifice. A very important word. And we learn who our new Passover is. It is Messiah. We read this verse. For also our Passover in behalf of us has been sacrificed. Who's that? Messiah. So that, now let's look at our last verse, verse 8. What should we do in light of that? That we have a Passover sacrifice. Who is Messiah? He instructs us. And it's commands. He says, so that let us keep the festival. Important words. Paul is telling believers that we should celebrate this seven days of unleavened bread. Because this relates to our new identity. Who we are. Let's conclude, so that we celebrate the festival, but not in that old leaven, nor in the leavenness of evilness or that which is immoral, that which is spiritually impure. Rather, he says, but in the state of being unleavened. And that state of unleavenedness produces two things in our life. Many Bibles will say that which is sincere, sincerity, but that word is also related to that which is inspected and pure. If you do a good study of that word for sincerity or purity, you know what it is? It's two Greek words, words put together. The word for judging something, evaluating it, discerning something with the word son. So it literally is, let's judge it by the sun, that is S-U-N, bring it into the light. So everything is revealed. Everything that was hidden is now revealed. This speaks about us being upright, people who are transparent, people who don't try to hide things, but we want to step into the light because we have become unleavened. We no longer re represent the leavenness of this world which is connected to sin. So let's conclude. But in the state of unleavenedness with sincerity, and what's that last word? And truth. If we want to be people who are truly upright, we have to accept the truth. And Passover is a day of truth where God manifests his love for us. His love that caused him to do the work of redemption and bring out a sinful people, a faithless people, 
one who was impure and causes them to be a new creation. All those things in their past are done away with. We become that new batch, that new people, the body of Messiah in this world. So let us diligently keep this festival, not in the way of the oldness, but in a new way of faith and truth and sincerity in the Word of God, studying and learning more and more about that Passover lamb, Messiah Yeshua. Well, I'll close with that until our next devotional, which will focus in on blood. Until then, Chag Sameach.